All right, everyone, welcome back to the Horror Writers Podcast. Uh, I am your host, Jay Thorne. Zach Bohannon had, had a prior commitment tonight, so he couldn't make it. Uh, but I'm here with a very special guest. Uh, if you have heard of the movie The Forest, you're in for a real treat. Uh, welcome to the show, Jason. Hey, thanks. <laughs> so uh, I, I reached out because I came across your, your movie. I think it came, to, uh, it came to Netflix in April. Is that correct? Um, I, I know that it was, uh, it was out in the theaters January 8th. And then I believe that, uh, that, yeah, the video date was sometime in the, uh, sort of end of April, I guess. Right. Okay. And, uh, it really got my attention because the forest is a story about, uh, the suicide forest in Japan at the base yep. of Mount Fuji. And I, I think this is probably fair warning, uh, to anyone that there could be spoilers here. So if you've not yet seen the movie and you want to, you may want to pause and then come back and, and watch the movie and then come back and watch the rest because we are going to talk about some, some of the aspects of the movie. So uh, from your standpoint as director, could you give us like a short synopsis of, of what you think the movie is about and sort of what you hope to deliver? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, one of the uh, it was an idea that was hatched by uh, David Goyer, uh, who wrote Batman Begins and Man, uh, Man of Steel and uh, lots of other great things. And, and he, uh, I, I, I had not really heard about this. I mean, I'd, I'd heard about it, but I didn't really know about it until the, I heard the pitch. And then I actually had to go and do a lot of research on it. And then once I did enough research on it, I became sort of obsessed with the, with it because I, I think, um, uh, I grew up in Hawaii for about, um, 10 years of my life. So I grew up with a, a lot of, uh, Asian, uh, culture and influence in my life. And, and, uh, and had always, you know, known that the Japanese were very superstitious, but didn't quite understand the relationship um, of suicide of the forest and, and and just how suicide is actually an epidemic in in Japan and all that sort of stuff. But the the more research I did, the more I uncovered is like it, it had been going on for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years, dating back to when. Um, you know, people would lead the elderly into the forest and leave them to die because they didn't have enough money for food or they didn't have enough food for them. Um, so it, it, it's it's quite a fascinating place and it has a quite a rich culture of, of history. Yeah, I, I was uh, I noticed in some of your bios that it said you had lived in mostly in Hawaii as a young younger kid and then you had lived yep. in California for a while. Um, if, did you did you have uh, did you have friends of that culture and who sort of were able to describe the suicide, the suicide in that culture. I mean, is it different than it is in American culture? The like suicide itself and how people view yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, I think dating back to when I mean, it was a very honorable way to die. Mm -hmm. You know, hundred you know samurais would. Uh, you, you know, there, there, there. I think it's it's been, always been a part of culture. I guess over the la last 30, 40 years, mm -hmm. it's become quite an epidemic in Japan. Um, so, you know, in, in, in crafting the film, one thing that we thought was really interesting was this idea that um, a foreigner had gone over to Japan um, to teach English and somehow gets, you know, wrapped up in the whole thing and goes into the forest and, you know, so her, her twin sister has to come find her. Um, and, and I think that, that that idea of a foreigner in a very foreign land and kind of what it feels like to be, um, uh, you know, uh, alienated in a, in, a, in, a, in a place where you can't speak the language, you can't read the signs, um, and then you have to search for your sister. It seemed to be a, a, a pretty powerful, like, emotional drive for, um, you know, a, a horror thriller. Absolutely. I thought uh, Natalie Dormer's character was in, was very engaging for me. I, I felt like her motivations as a character in the story were very real. Um, I love how you tapped into uh, the elements of uh, siblings, and more particularly twins. Um, yeah. Can you talk about how that played into the story a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I, I have two younger brothers that are twins, so oh, it was like one of those. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those weird things where if enough if enough things start happening on a project. Where okay, and that and that was just sort of like and not an accident. I mean, it's just sort of like it happened to okay, Japan. Uh, I you know I, I live outside of San Francisco and uh, I drive across the number one, what used to be the number one 
suicide location in the world, the Golden Gate Bridge. The bridge, yeah. Um, and and uh, you know there was a lot of things, and then the fact that my brothers were twins, and I had sort of grown up with this, you know, these two people that kind of were very similar but very different people, but they they were connected in an odd way. Um, I, I really was was intrigued by that concept and just the idea that if your twin was if something bad was happening to her that you really would know if they're dead or alive, that that twin connection was something pretty powerful. Um, and it's, it's something that, you know, I, I guess what we tried to do is not, you know, to try to do as much of that as believable as possible. I don't, you know, none of this is out of the realm of possibility. Um, uh, because most of the film happens in Sarah's head. Yes. Yeah. Good point. Uh, let's let's talk for a minute about uh, well the movie is called the forest and clearly the setting plays an inc you know an incredibly important role in the story itself. Um, I I grew up in Western Pennsylvania and I played in the woods all day long as a kid and uh, was a huge fan of the Blair Witch Project when it came out because of the role that the woods played. I'm yeah. wondering if you had that sort of childhood or did you sort of tap into this this element of this mysterious forest for the movie. Um, I've always been, um, I've always been intrigued by the idea that a forest is so close to a lot of our houses and a lot of where we are, or there's wooded areas and things like that. And there could be something really bad lurking just beyond, you know, the first set of trees. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, it, it's, it just seemed like a very intriguing concept of, you know, it's been done before. I mean, Blair Witch obviously was just a, just did it in a, it, you know, it, it's a national park area, I guess, you know, and they go exploring and, and bad things happen. I, I think that um, it's, it's something very relatable to people too. You know, we all have experience with a forest. It's not like uh, uh, aliens where it's like, you know, well, how many of us have had experience with aliens? So, you know, a forest is very close to all of us. I think, you know, one of the one of the ideas was, um, you know, like the movie Jaws is a, is a great example. It's like, you know, after that movie came out, you sort of looked at the ocean a little bit differently. <laughs> um, you know, there's there's just something about the idea that this very um, unassuming forest could hold so many bad, you know, bad things. Yeah. Now, I know the Japanese government would would not permit you to film there, and so you, you filmed elsewhere, but I know that you visited there. It, it, did you do that during pre-production, and, and what was that like? Yeah, I actually did that um, on my own. When we were in script development, I just having sort of lived with the idea for long enough and, and, and the, the, the you know research that I just sort of said, before I go and try to recreate this, I have to go there. Um, so I flew to Tokyo. I did sort of a similar trip that Sarah makes. And one of the things that I thought was really interesting is that, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a, actually it's a beautiful national park on one end. Um, there's families walking around this and that, and then there's this part that you're not supposed to go into and, you know, has all the same warning signs, um, uh, that, uh, that you see in the movie. It's, it's all recreated. And the idea was, you know, um, uh, don't go in here, you know, your life is very precious, all that sort of stuff. And once you go over that, that little threshold, it's just, everything changes. It's just, it's, it's a very different place. Uh, it, it felt a little colder. Um, it was quieter, you know, there was almost an absence of sound. Um, uh, it, it's just, there's a feeling that you get being there. And I, I had to, I had to go because a lot of what we did is we recreated, um, parts of the forest, uh, you know, uh, in Serbia, because we shot most of the film in Serbia. So um, there's a ranger station that she comes upon, and and we actually built a full Japanese, you know, ranger station on the side of the road in Serbia um, in one of their, in the Tara National Forest. So, you know, it's one of those things that in order to recreate all those very minuscule details that are very important to someone like me, um, I had to go there and I photographed everything and, and, and then brought it all back for my production designer who then designed the whole movie. Did you step off the path? I have to ask. I did. I did. And, you know, it's 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 very dangerous. It's like uh, the whole entire forest has sort of sprung up off of lava rock. Mm. So it's there's there are lava tubes everywhere. I mean, you could you could fall down a hole very, very easily. So it's one of those things that not only is it very dangerous, but it's also 
Um, I, I, you know, and developing a script where if you do walk the wrong way, you get turned around very easily. There's a lot of people who um, go there to, to to think about committing suicide, and then they can't find their way out. Mm, wonderful. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty powerful stuff. Uh, yeah. I felt like um, I, I I've I've said this, and uh, I was, t- was telling my buddy Zach that I I absolutely love the movie. I I wrote a um, a dark fantasy novel that's loosely based on it, and so I was somewhat familiar with some of the concepts. And I kind of I did some research as well, and I was just enamored by the whole idea. And what I loved about your movie is that um, it has that, but you had you create all these other layers. So you talked a little bit about Sarah and Jess, the twins, but there was also this backstory about their parents. Um, sort of what role did that play in the story, and how did how did that relationship come about, and how did you use it as a storyteller? Um, uh, first off, thanks. Um, I, I think for me what was interesting about Sarah as a character is it's somebody that you meet um, in the beginning of the film, and she seems very put together. Mm. Um, and then the more that the film, and these are all, there's a lot of um, subtle layering of, of character there. Um, <laughs> excuse me. There's, there's this buildup of, you know, you start to see a couple kinks in her armor, and you start to see sort of a little bit under that maybe Sarah isn't quite as reliable as a narrator as we thought she was. Um, and it's that first story where she tells of her parents where she's sort of saying one thing and then on screen we're sort of seeing a different thing. Um, it's something, it's funny, we, we did a test screening down in the Long Beach in California and, um, you know, we, we had like a small little group, focus group after the screening and, you know, the, one guy just raises his hand and says, I just don't understand this. <laughs> She says that they got into a car crash, but then you hear a gunshot, and that doesn't make any sense to me. And, like, somebody interrupts her and says, that's because she's not telling the truth. And it's like, you know, and there's there's these layering of things that we start to see as a character that she's potentially not as truthful with herself as well as she, you know, as, as well as with other people. Yeah. Yeah, that's – uh that threw me for a loop too. And, and yeah. I, I, you know, I sort of trust the storytellers and I'm like, okay, I'm going to wait this out. There's clearly a disconnect here and it's not, um, it's not a lack of logic. There's a, there's clearly a reason why <laughs> she is, she's yeah. telling the story of, you know, the car accident and that's not what happened. So, uh, yeah. I trusted you on that and it, it, and it was, it was fantastic. What, uh, what were you hoping or, you know, did this film sort of meet your expectations or what, what were you sort of hoping to do with it um, uh, in, in any sense, whether, um, you know, f- career wise or vision or sort of what was your goal? And, and do you think you hit that goal? Um, yeah, that's a great question. I mean, I, I, I've grown up on horror movies, you know, I, 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 I think I saw The Exorcist when I was, oh, like eight years old, seven, eight years old. And I, I just saw it way too young stuck <laughs> and saw it behind a couch. And, uh, and it's one of those things that it really affected me because I, I love, I love horror movies. You know, they're, it's part of, you know, it's in my blood. Um, I, and I, nowadays there's a lot of bad horror movies and I, I just really wanted to sort of say, you know, how could we make, you know, how could I make, at least for my first film, just to something that felt a bit more elevated in the genre category, that, that it's not quite a horror movie, it's not quite a thriller, it's not quite a drama, but it has, you know, sort of the best of elements of all those. Um, it, you know, it, it, it's one of those things that I, I love the texture of the location so much, and I love the characters, and I loved all these different things that you know, it had the potential to backfire, where you put too many things into a bucket and mix them up, but I I really love the, the the way that it takes us a, a beat to figure out where we are. It takes us a beat to figure out who Sarah is, and it takes us. And by the time we've sort of caught up and we're sort of starting to be, you know, the, the it was important for me that the film is um, was told through Sarah's point of view. So we're sort of experiencing things as she's experiencing things, and I I, I like that in the film. Like I, I like that we're on the same level that Sarah's on throughout the film. Um, so, you know, when shit goes wrong, it, you know, it goes wrong and, and we feel it and we feel what she's feeling. 
Um, and, and, and I like that. I, I think it's, it's executed. I like, I like the build, uh, of, of the film a lot. I think it's, I think it's a fun ride to go on. Yeah. Fantastic. What, um, what sort of, if someone asks you what type of horror film this is, um, how would you, how would you answer that question? It's funny because, you know, it, it's currently on, I think I, I saw it on iTunes was, was a, as a thriller. And, and I think it is, it's, it's a psychological thriller um, with elements of horror. But, it, you know, but I've seen, I, I, you know, I've, I've heard from enough people that don't like horror movies who have watched it and said, oh, my God, that's the scariest movie I've ever seen. And I don't usually like horror movies, but I actually like this movie. So it's hard to call it a horror movie, but at the same time, um, it possesses all the elements of a horror movie. But, um, you know, I think psychological thrill, anything that tries to get into your head a bit, um, you know, uh, like the shining is a great example. You know, it, it's, it is a horror movie, but it's kind of not a horror movie. It's more of a, you know, it's psychological. It's, it's, it's a lot of drama, you know, but it's also got all the horror elements as well. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot like, it, not not in the style of movie, but the way you described it, I think Silence of the Lambs is kind of in that category as well. Like, it, oh, it's not a horror movie, but it's horrific. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, you know, it's got all the elements. It's, scary, but... it's a really scary movie. Yeah, yeah I yeah. mean, that, that's that's a thing with. I think Shining is the Shining is one of one of my favorite films, and it's also I think one of the scariest movies ever made. And yeah. and you know, Silence of the Lambs and other ones, really scary film. You know, and 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 that's why I think that when genre sort of transcends when things break out of the genre box and don't necessarily say, okay, we have to have a killer and we have to be in a house and it has to do this. I mean, that, that, those are the types of films I'm usually attracted to. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. What's, uh, what's on your horizon? I mean, what are, um, without disclosing anything you can't disclose, uh, but like what's sort of what's around the corner for you? What are you hoping to do next or any projects you can talk about? Um, that's, that's the, the frustrating part of Hollywood is that, you know, the, the pace in which it moves. Um, I can't, um, publicly talk about anything right now yet, uh, hopefully soon, but I'll tell you the types of projects that I, that I've most been attracted to, um, uh, you know, anything, you know, story always for me has to come first. Right. Um, and, uh, I've, I've always loved the world of fantasy. Um, so you know, for me, an action and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, I, for my next film, I'm definitely in going in the direction of something that has pace wise a bit more in the action fantasy mystery route. Um, and, and, and I think that, you know, one thing that I really enjoy about, you know, where we are right now, I mean, the fact that the forest was, was put out theatrically in, 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 you know, uh, uh, 2,500 theaters or so is, is a great testament. And then the people actually went and saw it was, was a great testament to, you know, the fact that the, hopefully we'll keep seeing movies like this come out in theaters, right. um, which I'm always a big fan of. So excellent. I know that's a very elusive way of, of guarding your question, <laughs> but Oh, I've I've interviewed you Hollywood types before. I know how you guys yeah. answer those questions. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's, such a, it's always such a hard question to an, to to answer because it's like you want to say everything, but then yeah. <laughs> how about music videos? Are you still doing music videos? Um, I'm doing I'm doing not not so many these days. I'm doing some really cool VR projects right now. I think virtual reality is a really interesting. Um, thing right now, I, I think it's in its very, very baby, baby infancy of storytelling, and I think that somehow, you know, there's going to be some sort of director or storyteller that cracks what that's going to be. Mm -hmm. So I've been playing around with that. I, I always have, a, I have a love, you know, what, a project that I did a bunch of years ago was uh, called Take This Lollipop, and it was kind of a scary Facebook connected thing. So you know, I'm always playing around with just new and weird ways of telling stories. Um, and, you know, as, as, as we get all these crazy devices in our lives, you know, these days, and, you know, there's increasingly as a, as a storyteller, there's just more and more, you know, interesting ways of telling stories. Um, and I, I, I'm kind of in love with the, the, you know, kind of where cinema is going right now as well. You know, I think the fact that movie theater screens are getting bigger and better and sound systems are getting, you know, in order to attract people and 
you know, four deeds, there's seats that shake and rooms that get colder and all that sort of stuff that they were doing in the 50s is kind of all coming back to add sort of experience, you know, um, to the mix. So I don't know, it's, it's a great time to be a storyteller. And I, I, I sort of jump around between a lot of different types of stories. Totally agree. I think it's a golden age of technology for storytellers, no matter what yeah. your medium, no matter what medium you're in. It feels like it feels like we're um, at the very beginning of a of a really important time. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, yeah, totally. And and everything. I mean, music has gone through transformations, and movies will go through transformations. And you know, I think just every the, all the everything that has been touched by technology, it's going to be a really interesting way that we'll all, uh, as storytellers just keep you know sort of figuring out what's next and what's the new thing and 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 all while we're doing that we're going to sort of see things pop up right in front of us and go wow nobody nobody expected that that's that's the great shift that i think mm -hmm. is happening but but things that you know things that i think five or six years ago that people didn't think were going to be relevant anymore are now more relevant than ever like television is having you know yes. its biggest uh, i mean television i mean Last year was the biggest year ever at the movies, and you know, television. More people are watching television, just not on television. They're right. streaming it. Yeah, it's a, it's 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 cool time. I I love this time period yeah. personally. Excellent. Hey, it's been uh, it's been a real pleasure talking to you. I so appreciate the time. Uh, I know how busy lives get. Uh, what's uh, I'll put this in the show notes. But what's a what's a good place for people to find you if they want to connect or follow your stuff? Um, on Twitter, I'm just at Jason Zada, um, and uh, you, if you type me in on Google, you can always <laughs> um, find me. Um, but it, you know, I, I do. I, I, I link uh, a lot of stuff, and following me on Twitter is always a great way. So excellent. Again, uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the movie. I was I went total fanboy, and I was like, oh, I'd love to talk to this guy. And when you were up uh, for doing it, I was like, All right, awesome. So thank you. My pleasure. You. My pleasure. Thanks so much. <laughs> All right, everyone, thanks again for joining us on the Horror Writers Podcast. Uh, hopefully we'll find – hopefully Zach comes back. I heard he was going to the forest, but uh, hopefully he'll be back next week for uh, another episode. So uh, thanks again. Take it easy.